right here is full dead mode. You know, a board event wall is a great way to add both style and depth to your space. Here's an easy to follow video for how you can build your own board and bat wall with tips along the way to make the job easier. Now let's get after it. Here's a list of tools you'll need to complete this project. You'll need a saw to cut your boards to the right length. As for the nail gun, this is optional, but a time saver. I used a hammer with finish nails. It just took a bit longer to complete the install. The rest of the tools are pretty common for the do-it-yourselfer to have on hand. Now that you know the tools needed for this project, let's break down the materials. There are four main things you need, which are wood, filler, nails, and paint. For the wood, I used Primed MDF, which stands for Medium Density Fiberboard. This is an engineered wood that's often used for trim around your house. I used a wider board on the top to give a bit more depth for drop down from the ceiling. This is optional and based on your design taste. All the other pieces were the same width. All the other materials are pretty basic. Filler for nail holes, nails for fastening the boards to the wall, and paint to finish the project. Before buying materials, you need to determine the number of boards needed. To do this, measure your wall length and height. My wall space was 128 and 3 quarters inches wide by 96 inches tall, or about 10 feet by 8 foot. Next, you need to determine your desired spacing between boards. Ask yourself, do you want wide or narrow board placement? Wide placement comes with fewer boards, fewer cuts, and altogether less time to install. Or do you want narrow board spacing? This comes with more boards, more cuts, and ultimately more time to install. However, it also comes down to your design style. Once you've chosen your desired board spacing, use a notepad to sketch your board and batten design. Here's the measurements of my design. Sketching is an important part of the process because it helps you visualize your design and get the right look. It also helps you keep track of your cuts down the road. Now you're ready to calculate the number of boards you need to buy. Do some math to calculate this based off of wall measurements, board placements, and your MDF size. This is where sketching really helps. For my top board, I used a wider board, a 1x6 MDF. All others were the same width, a 1x3 MDF. My top board was 1x6 wide by 15 feet long, so I just needed one of those. For the middle and base boards, I used 1x3s, all of which were 8 feet long. So I needed 11 boards to cover my desired grid placements. Once you know how many boards you need, you're ready to buy the wood. Here's a tip. Make sure your car can fit the boards before buying. The 15-foot board I used took the entire length of my car and barely fit. So buy shorter boards if needed. Now you're ready to calculate your board cuts. This is the most complicated part of the project because you have to calculate the spacing of your boards before cutting. Let's start with the middle vertical boards. Here's how to do the calculations. Start with your wall height. Mine was 96 inches. Then subtract the width of your top board, base board, and any base trim that you have to work around. In my case, this netted to 84 inches. Now that you know your vertical measurements, we need to calculate the horizontal board measurements. Start with your wall width. My top board spanned the width of the wall, so the cut measurement was just over 128 inches. Pretty straightforward, but the middle boards need more math. To calculate the length of the middle horizontal boards, start with the wall width. Then take the number of horizontal boards, in my case this was 6, times the width of those boards. This gave me 15 inches of total space taken up by these boards. Next, subtract this number from your wall width. In my case, this was 113 and 3 quarters inches. Divide this number by the number of spaces between your boards. This gave me a width of 22 and 3 quarters inches. This is complicated, so check out fulldadmode.com for a complete breakdown of these calculations. Now that you know your cut lengths, measure and transfer these to your wood. Here's a time-saving tip. Make a cutting template for the inner horizontal boards, because there's a lot of them. Do this by measuring and marking one board to use it as a template for measuring the rest of the inner boards. This saves time by not having to measure each board. Now that you have your boards cut, you need to get the wall ready for the install. First, fill any nail holes or surface scratches with nail filler. Once the filler dries, use a high grit like a 180 plus sandpaper 
to sand the filled holes and smooth flush with the rest of the wall. Next, use a stud finder to find and mark the stud placements on the wall using a pencil. This will come in handy later when nailing the boards to the wall as you want to hit as many studs as you can to fasten the boards securely. Now you'll want to mark the placements of your boards on the wall based on your sketch design so you know where to place the boards. Measure the board placements and reference your sketch pad. Start from the left to right, marking the first board width, then each middle vertical board placement. Mine was 22 and 3 quarters inches from the first mark, or 25 and a quarter inches from the wall. Continue until all placements are marked. Now that your wall is ready, it's time to fasten the boards to the wall. Start with the top board. Note, this step is primarily needed if you don't have a nail gun, which I did not. Drill pilot holes to get a head start on the nails. Pilot holes aren't really needed for MDF, but it really helps to not have to hold the board and juggle it when trying to nail. Now you're ready to install the top board. Here's a tip, get a helper if you can. I was working alone, and if you are, make sure you find a stud near the middle of the wall as a starting point. Use a step ladder and place the top board flush with the ceiling. Nail the board to the wall, making sure to hit the stud. Place a second nail about two inches below your first nail. Then, nail the rest of the board to the wall at each stud interval. If you're using one long board, the board will bow a little bit, so each time, make sure to push it to the ceiling to make sure it's flush. Now you're ready to install the baseboard. Place the board flush with the existing base trim, or to the floor if there's no trim. Nail it to the wall at each stud interval. Now you're ready to install the middle vertical boards. Place each board on the wall aligned to your markings, and fasten with nails. Repeat until all boards are fastened to the wall. If your boards don't align to the studs, you might find that some bow a little bit off of the wall. To fix this, simply shoot or hit your nails at a 45 degree angle to keep the board tight against the wall. Now you could also use glue to fasten your boards to the wall, but the problem with glue is that if you decide to remove the boards in the future, glue tears drywall when pulling it away, making it a bigger refinishing project. Also, caulking edges before painting help secure the boards to the wall as well. Now you're ready to install the middle horizontal boards. Place one board on the wall, aligning to your markings. Use a torpedo level to make sure it's straight. Then, fasten it to the wall with nails, hitting studs where possible. Repeat until all boards are fastened to the wall. With your boards up, you're ready to prep for painting. Fill nail holes and any gaps between boards with wood filler. Once the filler is dry, use a power sander to sand to a smooth finish. Make sure to vacuum or brush any sawdust before painting. This next step is optional. Apply caulk to each of the MDF edges, applying between the boards and the wall. Use your finger to smooth to a smooth finish. Next, you're ready to paint. Tape any wall edges you do not want painted. Then use a step ladder to start painting at the top of the wall, working your way across and down the wall. And with that, boom, here's the finished product with the before and after shot. I hope you enjoyed this video and it inspires you to go full dad mode on a room renovation of your own by making a board and batten wall. Be sure to like and subscribe and visit fulldadmode.com for more how-tos and tips.